Being a full-time creator is more than just playing games and going live. In this episode of the Becoming Creator podcast, Big Cheese actually dives into how he brings entertainment and fun to his content, all while putting in the work to actually grow his brand and become a full-time content creator. I started balancing it a lot more when I realized that streaming is cool and streaming brings in a community, but also you want more eyes on where you are as far as your location, as far as streaming. I'm putting out content on different platforms like Instagram and TikTok and other places. So like, hey, you guys come to this channel so you can see more of this live content or come to this channel to see more of this great stuff i find myself balancing to where i stream like at least four to five days a week and then spend some of those times editing either live or offline because sometimes you need that mental break to be like okay let me just take the time to get some good footage in and um try to upload that at a scheduled time if you have a set schedule people will put it in their schedule it's like oh he, he, he come on at two o'clock all right i'll be there at two o'clock but if you get on like at 605 p.m it's like whoa he got on kind of i still slide through they respect you more they love you more when you have a dedicated schedule and you, you know, show that ahead of time. Okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what time I'm getting on. I hope to see you guys there. So I'm making sure to work on the schedule and stick to it. You ever try and have people in the chat go and hype it up? Or is it kind of just like, let it go and see if people come the other way from it? I try to do like both because it's like, they're already in the stream. So it's like, you don't be thinking like, y'all go and hype that tweet up or go hype that, yo, just go share it, just do it. Like, you know, you don't think about that until like, it's like, okay, wait, I should have did that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like right afterwards, okay, no, you, the chat's here and they love what you do. So, you know, if you got a Twitter, if you got a TikTok, go like it, go share it, go go hype it up. Like let people know what's going on right now. So that, that'd be like the best way to, you know, I guess like better up your relationship with your community and you know, they can be able to say like, hey, yo, this was dope. Let me go ahead and share this, this is crazy. And then their community sees it, which brings in more people, which brings in more people. So it's all about learning how to create that growth with your community. Your album is your gamer for life. Like where did that start for you? And then how did that even transition to then even wanting to create content fresh out the womb i always tell people I, I like you know when i was born i had a controller in my hand you know I, i've been gaming ever since i was born my first game and my first love was indeed super mario brothers on nintendo i've just been gaming ever since and it kept me you know out of trouble how my mom says it off the streets but at the same time got on her nerves because the electricity bill was so high so you know <laughs> that's that's where it all started and like ever since then i've just been trying to find ways to let people know how gaming does good there's a stick where that gaming doesn't do good and there's so much crime and so much this and so much that and it's like they always look at the bad side of gaming but they don't look at the actual great side of gaming and how it helps people and improves like you know awareness and visuals and things of that nature so i always try to prove one thing is that gaming does good what was i guess the inspiration or the passion if you had a specific thing or interest for it just loving what i do you know that that's the root that's the root of it you know is that day in my life i never thought that gaming would put me in the position i am in today and that's why i'm forever grateful when it comes to gaming and entertainment and the community behind gaming and entertainment nobody ever think like hey gaming got me a car or gaming got me a house or gaming got me in this basement like i never thought that a day in my life because i've been in it but for 15 years before i even got into gaming so it was like i can be able to do this now based off of gaming oh this is great i can go to places now that i've never been to because of gaming holy cow okay let's continue doing this then our, our journey continues so that's how i look at it it's like my past passion for something got me to where I'm at. And what people need to understand is that the biggest goal in life is to do something that you love, but the biggest challenge is to continue doing what you love with a profit behind it. That's the biggest challenge. Anybody can do what they love, but can you continue to do it and make a profit off of it? Did you kind of just hard shift over towards content? Was it something that you were going half and half on? What was your process on that? It was definitely half and half. You know, I, I spent like, you know, full time taking care of other people's issues at hand. So I had to mentally prepare for that because they're always blaming you for a mistake they made. So you have to fix what they messed up and be like, is there anything else I can help you with? Like, oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry I made you push you through this. Don't apologize after you know cuss me out for like five straight minutes. Like, you know, when that happens, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm home. I get to play some games. I'll get like four to six hours in, go to sleep. That's that. Well, in that time frame, you know, you had to mix up working full time and then sure. you have to, you know, play a couple games for a couple of hours and then edit that before you go to sleep or edit that on your break or your lunch, you know, so mixing those two it was always it wasn't a hassle it was more like this is challenging because now i have to figure out how can i do both at the same time but now it's just one it's like oh okay how can i do more of this <laughs> so it's just like you know mixing the two together it's cool but you just have to make sure that you don't overdo or overstep your boundaries on what's bringing home the bacon first i mean you have a love for music as well and mm -hmm. have integrated that into your content i've seen how did you make that happen you know I, I, I always try to like look for ideas you know of different ways of 
of entertaining individuals that come to my streams or that come to my channel. I never thought about doing like a looping station on my um, streams, but I give full credit to um, Mark Rebele. He's a heck of a professional looper, that's what I call him, but he's a master at work with that. So once I learned that you could be able to like, you know, connect the dots with putting it on your platform and making music live and when people put in their credits or put in their channel points and hey, make a song and then I make a song of what they're talking about and just freestyle it and put the music together. It's so entertaining for people. And I love doing that because it's one way for me to keep my mind going as far as like freestyling and making music. I always find ways to entertain people or to keep people on the channel to see more because I always tell people, you know, don't be late or you'll miss something great. And then people be like, oh, did I miss anything? Yes, you did. But I always find ways to make sure that people don't miss it by, you know, recording or clipping and putting it up. I, I guess, is there anything that stands out for you earlier on in your journey? Actually, there's a couple. One for sure was being on the same stage as like uh, T-Pain. And, uh, you know, when he was performing and doing his side of the uh, song and then I came on the stage and I danced with him and I had a little, a little bit of fun with him. It was pretty dope. I, I definitely had fun with that. Markiplier recognizing who I was and, you know, when he came to my channel because he was just doing like a random search and he came to my channel and he watched me for like some time and for somebody like Markiplier to come to your channel and be like, yo, this dude is awesome. Check him out. His name is Big Cheese. But um, at that time, it was like, you know, he was saying, it's crazy how this person is so entertaining and he, he has many ways to entertain people, but he has like a fraction of the views. He deserves more views. And with me being the humble person that I am, I'm like, I appreciate that. Thank you. But inside, I'm like, he is so right. I just... <laughs> Oh my God, I need more. I got to get more. I just want people to see what I have to bring to the table. Yeah, it's like you feel like you've got it. You've got the sauce there, whatever it is, but you kind of need the people to kind of come in on it almost and, and, and see it. And that's, uh, I mean, what an opportunity that is. That's insane. That's awesome. Right. Like, I just, I'm just grateful for those that do watch me and discover me on like from their side of the world. Anybody from a small channel to a big channel, I do appreciate everybody that come through and watch what I do, even though I have a thought process or what they call the identity crisis where it's like okay i've been on this platform or i've been on creating content for since 2006 but i'm not seeing the same numbers as others i still remain humble and i still entertain people that's what matters the most what is kind of the most important thing that you've learned or that you would want everybody listening who's even thinking of getting into content or you know see where you're at what would you say i would say chase the dream don't go for something just for the money because the money is going to come with what you're chasing as far as the dream you know when you're passionate about something it will definitely show and if people have that same interest or same passion, they'll support you. Stream like everybody's watching. Even when nobody's watching, you stream like everybody's watching and just know it's not microwavable. Your journey will continue for a long time as long as you put in the work in it. A lot of people think it's just like instant. Make sure that you and your community is on the same page and you know, if you're going to a different platform, let them know too so they're not confused on what's going on because that happens too. You, you gotta be grateful of the moments that you do have. Therefore, you, when you get to that moment again, you'll be like, oh, so this was the feeling. This was dope. This is, I'm, I'm here now. Don't ever be ungrateful when it comes to like, you know, you get a big wave of viewers or a big wave of follows or subscriptions or whatnot because if you are ungrateful, it will show. And then when that moment hits you, it's like, all right, I got knocked down. Let me get back up and try it again. Be sure to follow our guest Big Cheese on all social media platforms. If you guys enjoyed this episode of the Becoming Creator podcast, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also get subscribed to get more content around how to become a full-time content creator and turn your passion into a career. Until next time, we'll see you then.